today's movie is The Thief of Baghdad, the 1940 adventure fantasy film starring Conrad Veidt, Sabu, John Justin and June Dupre. A young blind beggar named Ahmad tells the story of how he was once the Sultan of Baghdad until his evil vizier Jafar stole his throne and his sight and separated him from the woman he loved and wished to marry. Aided by a young thief named Abu, Ahmad must fight the dark magic of Jafar in order to reclaim his throne, save the princess, and get back all that was taken from him. Now, I'm embarrassed to say I had never seen The Thief of Baghdad before, but after watching Conrad Veidt in The Man Who Laughs, I was really eager to see some more of his work. And I have to say, The Thief of Baghdad absolutely floored me. I was absolutely stunned by its colour and design, and I have to say, I think it may be the most beautiful film I have ever seen. Ever. The Thief of Baghdad is an exhilarating, thrilling, and magical film that will fill you with wonder and transport you to a dazzling realm of gorgeous escapism and delight. Conrad Veidt brings a sense of genuine and sinister magic to his role. His extensive experience in silent film serves him so well here as some of his most intense moments are those without dialogue, where his power and malicious intent are just conveyed through his mesmerizing eyes. Conrad Veidt is a fascinating sort of yardstick of cinema history in this film, Consider that it was only 12 years before The Thief of Baghdad that he had starred in the silent film The Man Who Laughs, and only 20 years since The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. To think of how far movies had come in those intervening 20 years is absolutely incredible. The Thief of Baghdad actually introduced chroma key special effects, and it represents such a huge leap forward in the technology of special effects and in the possibilities of depicting fantastical scenes on the screen. The Thief of Baghdad was released only one year after The Wizard of Oz, and yet it seems so far ahead of even that iconic fantasy film in terms of the scope and ambition of its storytelling and its special effects. The design of this film is so remarkable, so outstanding, that it actually gave me chills. And its visual beauty actually made me quite teary. I can't remember any time the aesthetics of a film have ever affected me this way before. It features a really rich, saturated colour that reminded me a lot of the Orientalist fantasy pin-ups of an artist like Henry Clive, and also a little bit of the beautiful landscapes and colouring of Maxfield Parish. And I think we do have to regard the setting of this film in the same way we, we regard the setting of those Orientalist fantasy artworks. It's a Western fantasy of the Middle East, and really it might as well take place in Oz for all the resemblance it bears to the actual Middle East. It doesn't feature Middle Eastern actors, but it does feature a somewhat multicultural and diverse cast, which I think is quite unusual for its period. Granted, many of the lead roles are played by white uh, English actors, but it does showcase the remarkable talents of the wonderful Indian actor Sabu. African-American actor Rex Ingram also appears and is unforgettable in his role as the Jinn. Many other actors of colour and diverse ethnicities also appear in supporting and background roles in this film, which does feel in some ways unusual for the period and even slightly progressive. Sabu is charismatic, full of charm and energy as Abu. John Justin is vulnerable and appealing as the naive sultan who loses everything and must fight to get it back. June Dupre is fine as the princess, but is perhaps limited by the nature of the part, which is a little bit bland. But this in no way detracts from the overall quality and enjoyment of the film. But perhaps the biggest surprise in all of this for me was the veteran character actor Miles Mallison, who I've always suspected might have been the model for Parker in The Thunderbirds. And it turns out that Miles Mallison was actually the co-writer of this remarkable film. He also stars as the princess's toy-obsessed father, and he is very effective in this role. I've seen him in so many roles in British films over the years, and I've never realised he had this other string to his bow. I'm so impressed to learn he was such a prolific screenwriter as well as a prolific actor. But beyond any of this, the real star of the film is the design by Vincent Corder, who was the brother of the film's producers Alexander and Zoltan Corder. 
The film's production was somewhat troubled, I understand, interrupted by World War II, and it had to be moved from Britain to the US. And overall, it had six directors, but one of whom was Michael Powell, uh, famous for The Red Shoes and Black Narcissus, and I think his stylistic hand is very much in evidence in this film. Watching The Thief of Baghdad is like watching a vintage fantasy art illustration come to life. The whole film has the beauty of an artwork from the golden age of pin-up and illustrative art. And it's complemented by special effects which enhance rather than detract from the story. And I have to say, some of these special effects made my jaw drop. This is a film to be swept away by. If you are looking for a film to distract you from the current situation, to thrill you, to make your eyes widen with wonder, you could do no better than The Thief of Baghdad. It is a truly magical and enchanting film and one that people of any age could enjoy. This film filled me with a sense of wonder at the creativity that people are capable of at their best. How often do you get to say that? The Thief of Baghdad is filled with unforgettable moments of sheer imaginative delight. It utterly takes you away from the present place and time into a magical and mesmerizing dream. If you haven't seen it before, I can only urge you to watch it. And if you've already seen it, watch it again, because I know I will be. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.